where Paul instructed Timothy about gossip and what it can cause. In 1 Timothy 6, verses 20, verse 21. When you find it, say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Everybody seems to be fit, ready to go. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings. That's gossipings. And oppositions of science falsely so called. Verse 21 Which some professing have heard concerning the faith, grace be with thee. Amen. Chatter not the truth. If we can convince ourselves and others of a lie, it will take little time before we believe it as truth, right? Yes. We can use the knowledge of the world to justify our false beliefs and call it good and acceptable. This may be so to the world, but we must remember we are just passers-by in this world. Yes. We are to live in this world, not of the world. There's a big difference, and we are called to be the light of the world. Yes. Please turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy 2, verse 16. Same thing said again, or you can just write that down. Amen. Where the Apostle Paul addressed the same thing in 2 Timothy 2, verse 16, which says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So gossip will increase unto ungodliness. You never grow spiritually if you have the spirit of gossip on the inside. Amen. And do we sometimes wonder why our walk isn't where we think it should be? Amen. Or where we, we would like it to be? Are we given over to a destructive pattern of the spirit of gossip? This morning I would love each and every one of us, including myself, to examine ourselves. It is very important. Let's look at also the results from listening to the spirit of gossip. When you listen to the spirit of gossip, it brings about a changed heart. A hard heart. Yes. A heart of resentment. Yes. A heart of bitterness. Yes. A heart that lacks love. Yes. The problem with gossip is that its main purpose is destruction. Mm. <laughs> Once heard, it sinks into the spirit and change the heart of the individual who heard the gossip. Yes. The condition of the changed heart will spring forth many evil reactions to the gossip. My Lord. One reaction is criticism. Mm. That's the first reaction. Yes, the second is judgment uh -huh. and a superior attitude towards those being gossiped about. Uh -huh. Another reaction may be shock and anger. These emotions erupt if the individual feels betrayed. Close behind is hatred when the spirit is sown into the, 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 the heart. Suspicion, bitterness, and even unforgiveness. The spirit of gossip opens the doors to other spirits. Yes, it does. Amen. It is a gatekeeper. Its job is to open gates of destruction into the spirit of the listener. There are multitudes of reactions, but all are negative and not positive. There's no good way to listen to gossip, I can tell you that. We simply must not listen to it. Please turn your Bibles quickly to Proverbs 18, verse 8, where it speak about the tail bearer again. Thank you very much. I'm not here to defend um, any pastor on the pulpit, right? Amen. But as a minister of the gospel, though, Amen. whenever I hear of any rumors until it is proven in the courts of the land, Amen. until it's proven, I will not jump on that bandwagon and start tearing down any of God's anointed. The Bible says, Touch not God's anointed. That's right. Touch not God's anointed. Touch not God's anointed. Who are God's anointed? Your pastors, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists. Touch not God's anointed, nor do my prophets no harm. It is very important that we understand these things. It's also very important that we memorize these things. And it's, it's written on the, 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 the tablets of our hearts. 
Let's look at verse 8. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. Yes, it hurts. When somebody cares gossip about you, which you know you did not say such a thing, it hurts. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. It hurts. Amen? It hurts. The Hebrew word for gossip in the above passage of scripture is, is known as nergan. And it literally means to roll to pieces. That's the Hebrew word for it. We not only shred people to pieces by speaking gossip, but also those who listen to it eat the pieces and become poisoned by it. It may be, tantal it may be tantalizing fruit to hear gossip, but make no mistake, it will land in the spirit and produce evil fruit. Yes. Yes, when you listen to gossip, you are spiritually eating gossip as it goes through your gate here. Yes. After the gossip is digested into the individual who listen to it, there is often the burning desire to circulate it, right? Yes. In other words, the person who listens to the gossip will usually have the overwhelming need to share it with another person. The eater listener becomes the speaker and thus begins the cycle of destruction, spreading as a wildfire throughout as many who will listen to gossip poisonous hiss. Yeah. Please turn your Bibles to Proverbs 26, verse 20. Or you can write that down. Where it says, Where no wood is, where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So where there's no tail bearer, right the strife season. Yes. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yes. Where there's no tail bearer, that means we'll have harmony, unity, yes. oneness, and love. Yes. And we'll be like a one big happy family yes. in the house of the Lord. Yes. Amen? Yes. And that is why sometimes some people will come, many are calling few are chosen. Amen. Let me tell you this. God has chosen specific persons to be here to build this ministry. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Amen. And for those who came on their own with the agenda not to build but to destroy, yeah. God will move them through the door. Yeah. That's what I love about my God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So sometimes when it comes down to ministry, yeah. you have people that will come into a church with an agenda. Yeah. Not to build, but to destroy. Yeah. To cause um, mischief among the brethren. Wow. To spread news that is not godly against their leaders. Wow. Here's a good example of this principle. Feathers in the wind. Mm. One day a church lady driving by a local bar saw a pastor came out of the bar with another man. Imagine what would happen if they should see Prophet Michael coming out of a bar somewhere in West Palm Beach. Her pastor is staggering, staggering all over the place and grabs the other man to keep from falling down. She, she was absolutely horrified and calls several other people in the church who in turn call other people. Jesus. <laughs> and so forth. Before long, the pastor receiving cold glances at church and snide comments from his congregation. Now, if you notice, that person who saw the pastor staggering out of the bar did not went up to the pastor and say, Pastor, what is happening? Right. Didn't stop, but went on the cell phone immediately uh -huh. as a reporter, as they do those, those, those reporters do in Hollywood. Amen? Spreading that they just saw the pastor That's coming right. out of the bar. Right. Mm -hmm. Come Getting on. to the root of the matter, he finds out that one of his church members had seen him coming out of the bar. The, expl the explanation is that he was called to the bar by a man who he had recently led to Christ. That was the pastor's explanation. This man had fallen into sin and called the pastor for help. The pastor convinced the man to leave the bar and that he would drive him safely home. Upon reaching the bar, he tripped and grab the other man to keep from falling. My God, Simba. At that time, the church sister was just passing uh -huh. when the pastor tripped. <laughs> it's the truth. You're preaching right. It's the truth. It happened. Trying to keep the other man from falling. The church lady was immediately apologetic and asked for forgiveness. 
promised him to call everyone she had called and make things right. The pastor forgave her because if that's the job of the pastor, then that's the job of Christians. Amen? Once someone asks for forgiveness, we have to forgive. So the pastor forgave her and then took her up to the church balcony and split open a sack full of feathers. Shaking the sack, the strong wind blew the myriad of feathers in a thousand different directions. The pastor then told the lady that to make things right, she would need to pick up every single feather. She exclaimed that she'd never be able to find all the feathers since they had blew, blew all, all across town. The pastor then explained that gossip was the same way. All right now. Once let loose, it would spread and be impossible to retrieve, and the damage was done. It could not be made right even though he had forgiven her. That was a lesson he was teaching her. What if we see our Christian brother or sister involved in sin today? Should we just ignore what they are doing? The answer is no. But talking to others is not the answer either. At least not at first. Let's look at the words of Jesus to see what he has to say concerning this issue. Please turn your Bibles to Matthew 18 verse 15. Matthew 18 verse 15. And then when we move from there, we want to look at spiritual traveling companions of gossip. The last topic. Amen. Matthew, Matthew 18 verse 15 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall transgress against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Notice what the Bible says, alone. The Bible says, alone. Please underline that for me, brethren. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. The first recourse is to go to that individual alone. And talk to them about it. And notice that it says, if your brother sins against you. That's what it says. If the church lady would have gone to her pastor and talk to him, the old problem would have been cleared up long ago. Amen. Not only was this lady guilty of gossip, but she was also guilty of bearing false witness against her neighbor. Amen. As the word of God declared in Exodus 20 verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Write that down. Exodus 20 verse 16. This is why gossip and being a false witness are so closely linked together. Often lies are spread as truth. Just because you think it's true doesn't mean it is. Even if it is true, it should be repeated. Amen? Amen. It's very important, brethren. We're here to build. We're here to, to, to the Bible says, iron sharpened iron. We're here to lift up our brothers and our sisters' hands. We're not here to tear down each other. Why gossip against each other? If someone should come to you and say, Sister Mary is wearing a wig, or Sister Jane borrowed um, Pastor Carmen wig, that should not be told across the, 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 the community. That's between Sister Mary and Pastor Carmen, right? Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans 1, verse 29, 31. Just want to talk to you today. Right? Just talk. As brethren in the house of the Lord. Praise We're a family, right? Yes, we are. We are family. I know you have some people say amen to that. Amen. We are family, right? Yes, we are. Just want to talk today. The Bible is whisperers and backbiters are those who gossip along with those who are. Let's look at verse 29. Romans 1, 29 to, to verse 21. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Verse 30, backbiters, haters of God. This is the spirit of, of gossip. You know what verse 30 says? Backbiters, haters of God. God is not a, uh, uh, Jesus never gossip when you walk earth. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Verse 31, without under 